Hello, I'm the Morphemic Mr. Daycock, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to solve differential equations using an integrating factor. So before we start on that, let's consider this function here. It's an implicit curve, and let's see what happens if we differentiate it implicitly. So the right-hand side, if I differentiate it with respect to x, so I apply d by dx on both sides, the right-hand side is nice and easy, sine differentiates to cosine, and we're done. The left hand side, it, we need to use the product rule. We have u equals x to the power of 4, y, uh, v equals y, and therefore u dash is equal to 4x cubed, and v dash is equal to dy by dx. And thereby, from the product rule, we're going to get, so here's the blue, let's call the v's blue and the u's red, we're going to get u to the 4 dy by dx plus, and we need to go this way now, 4x cubed y. And that's going to be equal to our cosine of x. Okay, so that was fairly easy. But what this gives us is something a little bit more interesting. It tells us that if we were given the equation u to the 4 dy by dx plus 4x cubed y equals, equals cosine of x, what it tells us is that if we were in to integrate the left-hand side with respect to x, And therefore, if we're integrating the left-hand side, we must also integrate the right-hand side. If we were to integrate the left-hand side, we should just expect to get, oh, I've written u there, let me correct that. That's x to the power of 4, x to the power of 4. What we should get is just simply x to the power of 4 times y. And so what we're kind of doing here is we're doing a quick reverse of the product rule. If we can find something of this form here, then we can just reverse the product rule. And that will give us equal to sine x plus c. Don't forget that plus c, so it's not necessarily the same as the original function. And this is why it's very important to use this method rather than just assume you can jump back. Now, what is this form? What's going on here? Well, it's the form. Imagine instead of x to the power of 4, we had f of x times y change my colors around there, f of x times y equal to sine of x. Imagine that, but when we differentiate it, we were going to get, well, we've put u equals f of x, uh, v equals, that's not v, v equals y, we're going to get u dash is equal to f dash of x, and we get v dash is equal to dy by dx. And so we'll end up with f of x times by dy by dx plus f dash of x times simply y equals our cosine of x, but that function on that side isn't so relevant. So if we have something of this form, where we have this function of x, and this is the derivative of it, so we've got our f, and here we have the derivative of f on the right, multiplied by the derivative of y and just y here. That's a reverse. We can reverse the product rule with just simple integration. So what we want to do is find ways of doing that. How are we going to reverse this integration? How are we going to find something that looks like this? So let's consider our example we just had. We had x to the power of 4 dy by dx is equal to that was plus 4 lots of x cubed y was equal to cosine of x. Well, what if someone had simplified it? What if someone had gone, oh, you know what, I want to divide by x to the power of 4. And we'd ended up with dy by dx plus, well, it's going to be here 4 over x y is equal to cosine of x over x cubed. How would we know that it was meant to be like this? Because 
this bit here is not a product rule situation. We cannot just integrate that anymore. It's not in the form that we need. So how would we get it back to this original form? That's the question we're asking, and that's what we really need to think about. And the trick is to use an integrating factor. In this case, our integrating factor was x to the 4. We had to multiply by x flows by x to the 4 to get back to something that was a reverse product rule. And this is our integrating factor. And that is the key thing. We want a method of identifying this integrating factor because we wouldn't have known that. Why would we have picked x to the 4? There doesn't seem to be anything here that indicates we should use x to the 4. So how are we going to justify that it needs to be x to the 4? How are we going to find that integrating factor? OK, so the way we're going to do it is we're going to consider a more general situation. So we have, imagine we have some function that is dy by dx plus some p of x, some function p of x times y equal to some other function q of x. Imagine we have that situation. Now what we want it to be, we want f of x dy by dx plus f dash of x y equal to some other function. It doesn't really matter on this side too much. This is what we want over here. Now, what do I have to do to make this look more like this? Well, if I take this function here, what I have to do is multiply by my f of x. So I'm going to take that function and multiply by f of x everywhere. And we'll be left with f of x dy by dx, which is really good. Now, the next bit isn't so good. We get plus, we've multiplied by f of x, but we still have that p of x, and we still have a y. And that's going to be equal to f of x q of x. Now, this seems a little bit awkward. It seems like, what are we going to do? But actually, this is the key bit we need to identify. The rule for our integrating factor is that we need and it's this term, this term that's different that's the key, we need our f dash of x to be equal to f of x p of x. Which means we need f dash of x over f of x equals p of x. And now I'm going to integrate because this derivative is the thing that's really annoying. We don't that we want f of x, we know p of x, and the derivative of f of x we kind of just want to get rid of. In a sense, we do already know it, but we want to effectively eliminate it. We don't know enough of it as things stand because we don't know the f of x part. So the way I'm going to get rid of a derivative is to integrate. So I'm going to add integrals to both sides. And this is, is fine, this is really good, because in fact, my left-hand side is in a, a form that we know. The left-hand side is a derivative divided, divided by the original function, and so the left-hand side just integrates to the natural log of f of x. The right-hand side, we have no idea what it's integrated to, because it's a general function. It's just our integral of p of x dx. But that's okay because now I can rearrange for f of x and I know p of x in general. This is a generalized form. I know p of x. So for my p of x, I can just pick something. Um, well, let's be clarified. I'm not going to pick something. I'm going to be given it in the question. In the question, I'll have my p of x as original idea in whatever I'm trying to solve. But this here, I can solve for f of x and the f of x, the integrating factor. Remember, f of x was the integrating factor we wanted is going to be equal to e to the power of the integral of p of x 
dx. And that's what we wanted. We now actually have a form, an explicit form for f of x in terms of p of x. Now it does require us to be able to integrate p of x, but it nevertheless works. So let's go back to our one we had before. We had dy by dx plus 4 over x. y was equal to cosine x over x cubed. And now we knew, oh, it's x cubed or x to the, no, it's x cubed, yes. Oh, I think it was meant to be x to the 4, wasn't it? Yeah, that should be next to the 4. Let me correct that. But there's no, that's just nice. I mean, it works out quite nicely that way. There's no reason why it had to be x to the 4. So you could have blocked it. Notice perhaps from that. But let's see. We know our integration factor should be x to the power of 4. We know that's what we need. So let's see if this method gives it. So it tells us, this method tells us that our integrating factor must be equal to i.e. f of x must be equal to e to the power of the integral of our p, our function p, which is 4 over x in this case, dx. Now that's easy to integrate. That's going to integrate to e to the natural log of x, except 4 times that because we had a 4 on top. And now, well, by our log laws, we get e to the natural log of x to the power of 4. Because we want to bring that 4 inside, because we can't inter we can't solve this right now. We have to bring that 4 inside so the e and the natural log can cancel out. And then you get e to the natural log of x to the 4. Well, that's just x to the 4. And we're done. So this here is our proof that, well, this is a justification that this works. The proof we gave you earlier. But this is a justification that proof that process I went through makes sense. This did give us our integrating factor. By doing e to the integral of 4x, 4 over x dx, we got exactly the integrating factor that we wanted. Okay, thank you very much. In the next video, I'll be going through a couple of examples of this. So if, you're, if you want to see how it works in progress, see watch the next video. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video.